Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9. Until recently, there have been three pillars of cancer care, radiation, chemotherapy and surgery. Anyone who's been down that road will tell you it can be extremely painful. Now there's a potential fourth pillar of cancer treatment. It's called immunotherapy and it works by boosting your immune system. Tonight, Alison Vushnik explores the science behind it, including a promising new method that actually uses viruses to fight cancer. because the unknown. You're doing good. Time is relentless, waiting in the clinical trials unit. It's 1 p.m. Pamela Brush has been here for hours. It's starting to take its toll. Pam and her husband traveled for three hours from home to the Princess Margaret Cancer Center in Toronto. They are here to find out whether Pam's tumor has shrunk. It's very scary because I don't know what's going to happen. So it's like minute to minute. I think today's been one of the hardest days. This has been Pam's life for nearly two decades. Pam has alveolar soft part sarcoma, a rare type of cancer that's found in the muscle. It's very, very overwhelming because you don't know what's, what's gonna happen next. You know, and then you think, oh, who, what about my kids? And am I gonna be here for my kids? And it, it's really hard. Pam found her first tumor in her left hamstring. It was the size of a grapefruit. Despite treatment, years later, the cancer was back, but this time in her brain. The tumor was right in the front left lobe and that controls your mood. So I was, I was really mean, I was really nasty. I was just hating, hating life. Joel and I just went through the motions. We had the brain surgery, we did the radiation, and then we thought everything was fine. But a full body scan revealed Pam's cancer had spread to her lungs, kidney, and liver. She was stage four. Okay, so how you been feeling? Tired. Really tired? Okay. Pam was getting sicker and all other forms of cancer treatment weren't working. In a move to keep Pam alive, her doctor suggested she enroll into a clinical trial, one that would use her immune system to fight the disease. I was praying to God that that's what was gonna happen. It's called immunotherapy, and it's unlike any other cancer treatment you have heard of before. Instead of developing a drug that attacks the tumor, this form of therapy is geared toward harnessing the power of the body's immune system to kill cancer cells. When we talk about immune therapy, we're using agents that target the immune system instead of targeting the tumor directly. In other words, we try to induce a T cell or some other type of immune cell to be able to target and kill the cancer cells. There are multiple approaches to immunotherapy. One way is to help the immune system find and eliminate cancer. Another is unleashing the body's natural immune response to fight the disease. There's many types of immunotherapy drugs. One of the blockbuster drugs right now is targeting a molecule called PD-1. And it's thought that this drug takes a break off the immune system. What was found was that if, if we block this molecule, that's a stop signal in the immune system, what happens is it's, it unleashes a tumor response. It unleashes the immune system to attack the tumor. And that's why um, they're seeing such good responses in patients. Dr. Pamela Ohashi is a world leader in immune therapy research and has spent more than three decades trying to figure out how the immune system could be used to fight cancer. Some of the early trials have shown that patients can go out six, seven years, they're still alive. And those people were expected or had a life expectancy of six months approximately. 
So we can't really say how long they're going to survive because they still are alive. Although success rates of this type of treatment varies from patient to patient, doctors are encouraged by the results they're seeing in a number of cancers, including kidney, lung, and melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer. If you talk to the clinicians in the melanoma clinics, their clinics are now just overrun with patients who are surviving longer and coming back for therapy and follow-up visits. So this whole therapy really has been a game changer. And approximately 30% of the patients will respond, and that means their tumors shrink to some degree, if not completely shrink and, and disappear altogether. I would say that probably all types of cancers eventually will be able to be targeted by uh, immune therapy. But that is still years away. So far, there are only a handful of immunotherapy drugs approved for cancer treatment in Canada. And some patients are getting access to this form of treatment through clinical trials. Jeanette Edel is one of those patients. The 63-year-old has stage four endometrial cancer, which has spread to her lungs. It's a grim diagnosis, one that could give her less than a year to live. I had several tumors in my lungs that were growing fairly rapidly. If they can't stop the spread of this, I knew that I had to have lungs to, in order to breathe and live. This is not a new experience for her. Jeanette has been battling cancer for almost six years now. She tried the usual three forms of treatment, surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation, but her cancer kept spreading. I told myself, whatever the doctor thought we would try, I was willing to try trial drugs or whatever, because I want to live to see all my grandkids graduate. It's still my goal. So how are you doing? Dr. Marcus Butler, Jeanette's oncologist, thought immunotherapy might be able to help. Today, she is receiving her 21st treatment. We were there for the infusion. Okay, one, two, three. It's a precise procedure. This oncology nurse is carefully connecting an intravenous line into Jeanette's port, a thin plastic tube that was surgically implanted in her chest for treatment. How are you feeling right now after this treatment? Good. It has very subtle side effects. After the first few months of treatment, how much had your cancer shrunk by? By July of 2015, we were at 70% shrinkage. I was ecstatic. <laughs> so she's had a really impressive clinical response with the, the tumors that were seen on scans. And there's a possibility that that 30% residual is actually just scar tissue. So it could actually be 100%. Yeah, but we, you know, we, we're not putting her through a big lung surgery, so we don't know for sure. The biggest challenge we have right now is that not every single patient benefits. In fact, in many cases, the majority of patients don't have these long-term benefits from treatment, so we need to figure out how to make it so that everyone benefits from treatment. I found the drug, it worked. After the first two treatments, my uh, tumors had shrunk 58%, and then it kind of just stopped working. It wasn't doing anything. Pam had success on immunotherapy for a while, but it didn't last. Near the end of her treatment, Pam says she developed a new tumor. For a year, I had no side effects. And then the very last treatment, they found uh, a tumor right in the middle of my chest. I was devastated. This is the reality of any cancer treatment. It doesn't always work. Doctors are still trying to figure out why some patients are getting results and others aren't. It's that answer Pam is so desperately wanting. This is life or death for her. It's been tough. You try not to think about it. You know, you just keep doing stuff with your family, do stuff for yourself, and keep going. Because <laughs> you, you don't know how long you're going to be, you know? Next, viruses as the new hope to cure cancer. When you inject somebody with the herpes virus, even though it's modified, do they actually get herpes? No, they don't get herpes. There's a revolution in cancer care. A cutting edge new treatment that uses the power of the body's immune system to fight the disease. It's called immunotherapy. 
I don't think any of uh, my colleagues or I thought that we would be able to credibly get on and say that we think we can potentially cure cancer these days, but given what we're seeing, we really think that this is a possibility, at least for some patients. Curing cancer, it's a bold statement Dr. Howard Kaufman doesn't use lightly. I think what, what's going on today is just, uh, it got a very different feel, and there's no question that immunotherapy is now taking its rightful seat as a very important form of treatment for patients. And it's evolving rapidly. Doctors are now working on another radical form of immunotherapy, using live viruses to kill cancer. Viruses are really nature's way of stimulating an immune response. So if you ask what is the most powerful way to get an immune response in any host, it's really using a virus. It's known as oncolytic virus therapy. Within these vials is a live virus that will be injected into a patient. It works by activating the immune system too, but there's a twist. When the virus treatment is injected, it not only causes an immune response, but it also infects and destroys the tumor from within, creating a cancer-fighting tag team. We usually think of viruses as enemies, and it's interesting that now they're one of the most promising treatments for cancer. Why is that? Why it works, I think we need to do more research to understand, but I think that it is the one-two punch of directly killing the tumor cell and being able to generate an immune response. Hey, good How morning. Are you? How are you? Dr. Kaufman is one of the pioneers of TVEC, a virus treatment that uses a genetically modified version of the herpes virus to kill cancer. It's the first oncolytic virus therapy to be approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. So let me go order the virus. When you inject somebody with the herpes virus, even though it's modified, do they actually get herpes? No, they don't get herpes. Um, How many times do you have to answer that question? A fair amount. So <laughs> when you tell people, we're going to give you a herpes virus, it would sometimes get a strange look from them. The disease-causing parts of the virus have been removed. So we don't think that this herpes virus can actually cause the typical fever blisters that you see with herpes. It's a discussion he had with Morton Meyer. Morton, or Morty as his friends call him, has four melanoma lesions on the top of his head. It's his second bout of skin cancer in that spot. Do you want to take your shoes off? No. Oh, do you, so we, leave, we weigh you with the shoes on? That's yes. fine, come on over. So Morty went to see Dr. Kaufman at Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Dr. Kaufman decided to treat Morty using the modified herpes virus. We met with Morty, a man of very few words, on the day of his treatment. Okay, so when they say to you, we're going to inject herpes virus into your head, right? what were you thinking? Well, they said that you, you probably cannot get herpes because it's a reduced state. He had the best reaction to it. He's like, do I really want to get herpes? I'm like, seriously, you're 83 years old. Come on. Let's see, melanoma herpes, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I don't think you got to worry about it. Jonathan Meyer is Morty's youngest child. He drives his dad here every two weeks from Long Island. What has it been like for you from the diagnosis through this whole process? Yeah, it's been, it's been a roller coaster because um, a couple points, he didn't want to get the injections. I'm like, are you serious? You're going to stop the injections? I'm like, no, you're going. You know what the alternative is. Currently in the U.S., the herpes virus treatment is approved to be used for patients suffering from melanoma lesions in the skin and lymph nodes. According to Dr. Kaufman, one of the early clinical trials using the herpes virus found that roughly 26% of melanoma study patients had some sort of tumor shrinkage during treatment, and nearly 11% of them saw their tumors disappear entirely. 11% complete response rate is, is rather high for any single agent uh, therapy that we've used in melanoma. Would you say that 11% is excellent? Yes. We are now following these patients long term, and I think it will be important to confirm that if you do get a complete response, that this can in fact translate into potentially even a cure for some patients. Dr. Kaufman is now experimenting using it on cancers found in the liver. Do you see immunotherapy as the fourth pillar, the fourth option? Yeah, we often talk about immunotherapy becoming the fourth pillar now. I think immunotherapy is completely changing the landscape for patients, and what used to be a death sentence, I think, is no longer the case. 
It's one of the fastest growing areas in cancer research. In specialized labs like this one, doctors around the world are racing to develop the next cancer-fighting virus using illnesses such as polio and HIV. In Canada, Dr. John Bell, senior scientist at the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute, is part of that race too. I think there's a dream that one virus will cure everything, but the reality is we know that's not going to be the case because everybody's tumor is unique to their body and their genetic makeup. Dr. Bell and his team are in the midst of the first ever oncolytic trial that uses two viruses. They're using a common cold virus and the Maraba virus found in the Brazilian sandfly to fight the disease. And we're pretty excited about this approach. and I think this combination strategy is really going to be a game changer, we think. But this is just the start for Dr. Bell. He says his next line of attack is to combine oncolytic viruses and immunotherapy drugs to eliminate cancer. A trial we combine immune cell therapy with the virus therapy and it makes a lot of sense to us. It's sort of like bringing in the Army, the Navy and the Air Force as opposed to just bringing in one approach to kill a cancer. And the patient is Morton Meyer. Mm -hmm. Back in his clinic in the U.S., Dr. Kaufman is getting geared up to give more to his treatment. Now tell me about the treatments here. He injects right into my head. Right. With these needles. How painful is that? Very painful. You saw Morton yesterday. What are your thoughts on his progress? Yeah, no, he's doing very well. Well, at least one of the lesions seems to have flattened and I think is completely gone, which is not bad in the first few weeks of treatment. And hopefully it will continue to go away. So far, Morty's side effects have been a breeze. He's only experienced a little fatigue. Typical symptoms on this treatment can feel like having the flu a huge departure from the debilitating side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. We want to really stimulate the immune system. So these new therapies are, are doing that. They're stimulating immunity and not suppressing it. But this form of treatment is not going to work for everyone, at least not yet. It's a harsh reality Pamela Brush is living with. Pam is still at Princess Margaret Cancer Center in Toronto, waiting on her results to find out whether her latest tumor has disappeared. I feel that um, my cancer is worsening. So, but I'm waiting to hear what the doctor says. After going on immunotherapy to fight the tumors in her lungs, kidney, and liver, Pam says her cancer spread to her chest. So her doctor turned to a traditional form of treatment, radiation, to get rid of it. I just hope I'm gonna come out in the end and everything's gonna be good. But this is one of the hardest days. <laughs> Pam knows for now her only choice is to start a different immunotherapy trial. She says her cancer is still growing. Pam's just praying that this time around, it will work. I know like radiation doesn't cure it, chemo doesn't cure it. There's really nothing that cures this. The only thing I've found is that the immunotherapy, it is my only option.